Do you know what this book and this other one have in common? Apart from the obvious? They're both written by Nobel Prize winner authors, which are Gabriel Garcia Marquez in 1982 and Mario Vargas Llosa in 2010. In the case of Marquez, he continued writing amazing works after his win, some say even at the same level or better to the ones that awarded him his Nobel nomination. So, could he have been nominated again? And if so, could someone win more than two Nobels? But first, let's see what the actual process to decide the winners looks like. According to NobelPrize.org, the Norwegian Nobel Committee is responsible for the selection of eligible candidates and the choice of the Nobel Prize laureates. Their words. These candidates are chosen from a pool of nominations. As of who can nominate someone, it varies depending on the category, but let's leave it in that you have to be a recognized expert in the relevant field to be able to do it. So, after a year-long process of accepting nominations, revising them, and deciding on the candidates, the Norwegian Novel Committee casts a vote to decide the winner and throws the nerdiest party in Oslo on the 10th of December. There's nothing saying you cannot be nominated multiple times for different things. So technically, you could win multiple times, right? That is not only right, it has happened! More than once! Across the Nobel Prize history, there have been four individuals that have been awarded the Nobel Prize multiple times. Just as a side note, the Red Cross and the UNHCR have also won multiple times, but as their institutions instead of individual, we are not taking them into account here. So who are these multiple Nobel Prize winners? They're none other than Marie Curie for Physics and Chemistry, Linus Pauling for Chemistry and Peace, John Bardeen, both for physics, and Frederick Sanger, both for chemistry. What do you even have to do to win two awards? Are you supposed to be some kind of super genius? Well, yeah, pretty much. Let's see what these winners had to do to win. Let's go in order and begin with Marie Curie, heroine for many female scientists and fighter in a male-dominated field at the time. She is the first person in history to have won twice and the only one to have been nominated and won in both physics and chemistry. She almost didn't receive the nomination at all in the first place, because the French Academy of Sciences proposed only Henry Becquerel and Pierre Curie, his husband, as candidates. Outraged by this, mathematician and member of the Nobel Prize Committee Magnus Gost let, let's just stick with Magnus. Magnus Allerer Pierre, who in turn wrote a letter to have her included in the nomination, which they did, and she won in 1903 in physics in recognition of the extraordinary services they have rendered by their joint research on the radiation phenomena discovered by Professor Henry Becquerel. That's, that's what they said. The second award came in 1911 for the discovery of radium and polonium, two very highly radioactive elements. This time, she was the only winner and didn't have to share one bit of that sweet sweet prize money. Next came Linus Pauling, the only person in history with two prize wins that are not shared with anyone else. He won his first novel in chemistry in 1954 thanks to his research into the nature of chemical bonding. He won the Nobel Peace Prize of 1962 in 1963 for his hand in getting the signing of the first partial nuclear test ban treaty of the same year, which is not confusing at all. John Bourdain is the next, and he is the only person in history to be awarded a Nobel Prize in Physics twice. First in 1956 as one in the team responsible for the research in semiconductors and the invention of the transistor. You know, the thing inside every electronic device. The second came a little later in 1972, again as part of a team, this time for their jointly developed theory of superconductivity. Pretty electric this guy. The last person to join the exclusive two winner club was none other than Frederick Sanger, who won his first novel in chemistry in 1958 for his work on the structure of proteins, especially that of insulin. And the other award came in 1980 for his contributions in developing a method to read DNA. What? Oh my god, how, how, how do you even do that? And would you know that this is coming from a guy that described himself as not academically brilliant? And that's it, those are the two-time winners of a Nobel Prize. Pretty exceptional people if I may say.
So, to answer the question from the beginning, yeah, you can win more than two novels. You just have to be like a super genius or something. Like them. Do not forget to click that like and subscribe button down below. It really helps me. And tell me in the comments what did you think and what would you like me to talk about next. I hope that you liked this video and I hope to see you in the next one.